where you'll be learning the canal. So now we've got our ruler ready again. Do you remember about the accordion? Do you remember what we talked about? No, not The accordions are a water-based thing that a uh, husband and wife team got together and one was a scientist, one was the artist. And they're now, um, it's all water-based. And they, thought, they came up with a chemical combination that you could print and leave your ink out in the drying agent wasn't such a uh, problem. Right. There's all sorts of things you can do with modifying your ink, that's a whole other story. But right now what we want to do is that this just grips your board for you so it doesn't move. Perfect. Okay, and this, you want to remember this like a peanut butter jar. You want to, when you open it up, you want to mix it really right. well. Right. But the beauty about this ink is today, Wednesday, you can leave this ink on the counter here and you can come back and print again on Monday. Oh, it, they're very forgiving, which is just amazing. So, for this, you just take a line and you put it across like this. Okay. And then you want to kind of think about, well, two things. You want to have a clean area all the time that there's a systematic way, systematic way that you're working when you print. So you have your clean area, you keep everything like a rhythm. You have your paper cut. We have a, a simple registration sheet so when you start really inking up the um, plate, you can get it that way. So the first thing you want to do is get this ink at a consistency. And you can kind of see where it's really thick there. Yeah. So take a little bit off because you don't want that to not go evenly on the plate. But see now how we have a different kind of sheen to it yep. right in here. And then with printing, what you want to do is that when you print, you go up once and lift, up once and lift, up once and lift. Okay? Then when you come back, you can print and you can start to see that it's actually going into these areas of the wood block. Yeah. Now the thing that's really interesting that's a question is that some students don't like to have these marks in here, but what I talk to the students about all the time is the marks and the nature of the medium you're working in, a wood block, can be very finite and beautiful and and very um, defined like a Japanese woodblock print. Right. Or you can also make that your background actually is something you like to incorporate into your artwork. Okay, so now you can um, put the roll up again and you get a rag in here. Okay, now we charge the roller again and run the other way. Perfect. So how many times? Well, there isn't a set way. It's just a matter of looking at it so you feel that that is charged up enough. Now you might find on this one that this ends up being more of a test run for you because you've never done it before. So I would say uh, stop for now. Okay. And then I just go around here. Again, what's so nice is that... Yeah. And what's so nice about this ink is that it, um, that it wipes right up for you. Okay, so this is, again, trying to make it a... So, now you can flip the roll over and sit like that. So now, what you want to do is take one of your, first look at your hand, and see if you're doing okay. Okay, so she's gonna wipe off, well the roller, you don't really need the roller because we're um, using a piece of cardboard to apply your plate. I'm okay. sorry I didn't point that out, okay? So the roller would just be used to get some ink, but actually, Let's do it the right way. This is called Easy Wipe, which actually helps the ink. There's all sorts of ways that you can make your inks stiffer, softer, thinner, and all that. We don't need that right now with the Akua inks, some of the other inks for this project right now. So I just take a piece of cardboard, 
And again, just get some of it here since it's a small plate. Also, it's always better to put out less ink because obviously um, if you put more ink, well, if you put more ink out, we can put it in foil, but start off with less because also we're using a really tiny plate. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to wipe this up and get it ready to print. We're going to print it on this press here and then I will try to pull the print, okay? Now, printing uh, on the press, they have, made, you know, on the top, you can actually decide what kind of pressure you want. So we'll probably put a little bit more padding because holographs and printing you two we're printing, so um, again, we might need to adjust this. But for a proof, it'll be fine. So this is a proof. That means that your ink might not be completely right. We haven't centered it in the paper. We haven't done the registration. But again, it'll give you an idea of what happens. What happens when you're working with a dry point is that it's the exact opposite of rolling on top of your wood block, and then you pull your paper off. If you look in here, what you're actually doing is pushing your ink down inside here and then wiping away the surface. So it's exact, the exact opposite of what we're doing with the wood block. What's nice about printmaking one is you get to kind of have snippets of all these different ways of working, and then we accelerate a lot of these items in printmaking two. Again, this can be done as we will do in printmaking two with ferric acid, and then also actually etch the plate and etch the lines in, which was what we were talking about with the um, visiting artist that came a couple weeks ago uh, online in the gallery. Okay, so, yeah, so Sukli. So make sure, you know, I'll bring these all back, they'll be in the room, but you can kind of get the idea of doing it. Remember also, too, the reason that I wanted you to do this is that it gives you an understanding of how that this works with the dry point, and it also will be a beginning start for what you can do when we go to the advanced level for making two. Um, so that's, and it gives you the idea of how to wipe, wipe the plate, how it's different, and hopefully not worry about what your image is. You know, this was um, just to give you a uh, testing plate on that. This is Lexan. You can get Lexan. Remember in printmaking one, we talked about how you can print at home. You can get a pin press. There's other ways that you can wipe it down so you're not dependent totally on a printing press if you enjoy the process. Same as your wood block, but a different technique, okay? So what you do here first is that you just take the ink and put some on the end and then scrape it over the top. I'm going to have you finish the rest. Keep it up. Yeah, you want to keep it straight. Perfect. And get your edges. Perfect. And then go, yeah. And then you want to try to get some of that excess off, but still go around the whole plate first. That's okay, don't worry. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we've got two things going on here. So now she has messy hands, and she also has an area to work in that can be a little bit more messy. And we want to make sure before we get done, we actually wipe off all of these edges, okay? And also, Fingerprints can leave marks on your plate, so you have to be aware of that. There's also ways that you can print so you actually allow that to have a tonality on the plate, so you could start making yours having an atmosphere, you know what I mean, with a tonality. This is the Akua wiping cloth here, and it's a uh, material made uh, by Akua for wiping off the plates that's a little bit softer than the cheesecloth. We actually use cheesecloth on the, on the other place. Um, but this is a really nice soft material. So I'll show you, I'll start it, is that you take this and you put it in a ball. And right now I don't have to worry about my hands, but when I go over to the blankets and I get my paper, I have to take these off. And when I go to the press. Now those blankets have seen their day in a lot of ways, but we keep them that way for now just because when students are working and oopsies happen, then it makes it a little bit easier. 
doesn't mean that you're not going to learn how to print properly as far as doing with um, other blankets. So again, I make a circle here and I just start wiping in a circular motion, changing that, okay? So again, it's a little bit hard with the being small. Okay, and I want you to try that and I'll give you a new one. Now, if these aren't in too bad a shape, you actually can reuse these. We can put these in one of the containers. So make that nice little ball. Yep, okay, so hold it with one hand. And she's making circular motion. And you want to try to not overweight because you literally can pull that ink up out of the um, area. But there's some things we can do for that to stiffen up your ink. But when we go to print it, we might find that there are some areas that were over wiped. So that's just your practice. I wanted you to try to have the advantage of having these little plates because then you could be a little bit more reckless and go, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, that works. Okay? So now what we're going to do is, um, again, I'm going to pretend that my hands are totally clean. But anyways, I'm going to have a registration. Remember we talked about we're going to have a much more formal registration. So we're going to take this and drop it in the center. And then I'm going to show you how to do your paper. You got to take my gloves off. And you know these gloves, you can't get them back on once you take them off. So. And then if you come over here for a sec. And you can just lift this up. Get the, the, uh, and so what you want to do again, we're just eyeballing. We're going to have a formal registration and all that and all that. So you want to just take your paper, I'll put it here. Eyeball it and drop it down over the top. Okay, and again, we haven't talked about the front and back of the paper. There's an actual deco on the paper or there's a smooth side. Deco's on the edge, I mean. But a smooth side and one that's a little bit more textured, so we have to make sure, obviously, when we're printing, we're getting that correct, too. So this is only one newsprint up here, so I've got to get some more. And again, you want to not move the paper on top of it, and so I'm going to just get some more. And again, I haven't tested the pressure today on the plexiglass, so I'm not sure we're going to be um, at the right point with this. So this is a French Tool American press. You've heard me talk about this. It's an older press, very old. And the wheel allows you to have the weight of the roller go over the press evenly, but also distribute the weight when you're pulling it. So when you start to pull it, you get make sure it gets on the cylinder. And then you want to stand straight this way. You don't want to stand this way because um, of your back. But this feels a little bit light. I think I might have to put it up a little bit. Let's take it off. Okay, so it's on five. I have to take it off the roller and put it on six. Or is that on the other side? And cross like this. It looks pretty light, but we'll take a peek at it. Again, you keep the edge of the blankets underneath there. See, they don't stay in place. Okay. okay. Come over here, you want to pull up the corner and look. Pull up the peak here like this. Pick, pull it up like this. Oh, good. Okay, pull it up. Ta -da! So, so put it on the press so people can see it. Excellent. So, since she's wet the paper, we have to blot it and let it dry. So, you can print without putting your paper in the water, but it's, I, I really like to do this for students because it's an old-fashioned way and traditional way of doing it. But I'll show you what we have to do next is we come over to the drying, um, sophisticated drying area. We have that nice and even on her paper, okay? 
So we just take this. And if she was, are you going to put more today? Uh, you don't have to. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> so, all right. So then we take this and just put another pile on here. I tend to mark it some way by moving out something like this just so when she comes back. And then we just stack these on the top in case there's a lot of you printing. And put it like this. Old litho stones. And then that's it. Okay. So any questions? And we 
like this while they're working. Also, if you have not taken a Lexan cross-hatching, Rachel, if you would like to mess around with that, we have the uh, point tools, you know, the dry point tools in there uh, where you can actually scratch on this if you would enjoy doing that with us. That would be great. Um, and so Douglas, why don't we go and look. Again, also with prints, when you're looking at that, make sure, remember, we don't fold anything. We look at them carefully and uh, go through them. Any questions you have about a certain print, remember we've been going through this on Zoom. So if you have any questions about how they do that, how did that get done, let's talk about it. Okay, so questions are always open. Notice too the wood block I brought back from my studio home because we were working at home. This is that one that we talked a lot about in class. And it's the one, the third block up. Uh, that shows actually the actual fi uh, finished print. It was a print that we talked a lot about because of the gesture and the movement on the wood block is just really simultaneously works together. And we talked a lot about that. The assignment for the wood block, as you remember, is that we're doing one on white, black on white, one in watercolor, and then one we started talking about Japanese papers. Remember I have some extra papers over here? That set is what you turn in for this project. What you're looking at in these packets are a lot of students from a lot of different semesters, so please enjoy looking at these. I'll be roaming around and talking to you about it. So that's perfect. Also, I want you to notice that Jonathan cut down a couple of his that were a little uh, damaged a little bit, so we decided to cut that down, and then we're going to actually mat it so you don't see that, which can actually work that way. Okay, great. Okay, so did you do so the paper? No, 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 
got a major, you've got a major of how this piece of paper, when you put this down, you want to have it so it falls evenly. Okay, so so you make, the... Yes, yes. So you want to do that. And also, this paper we cut, and as I said, the etching paper we don't cut. Okay. This is some colored paper. Remember we started talking about Japanese papers in class? So you'll be doing your black and white, and then you'll also be picking up a couple of these. Okay? And you can do that. And think about how it relates to your work. You know, how is that going to relate to your work as far as color or black and white? There's also some Japanese paper over there in the flat files. So you will Okay, so let's... Okay, so now we cut out... We cut out, um, let me move it over so we're a little bit apart for right now. So with this Dremel tool, what you and I talked about was, is that um, when you did your working with the tools on this, we talked about maybe that you could have a line area in there that would be a little bit more simple for you to get to the finishing the drawing, okay? So what I had suggested to you was a drone tool because there are two that I set out for you here. There's the, there's the original one that has like a pen tool point, which will work great for you. And then there's this one, which is the sand tool, which you actually, like if you wanted to, this is your textured area, you know? You could actually put in areas where you sand it so then the ink, when it runs across, remember it goes on the top. It's relief, so you got that. So that'll end up having it that you can have different levels. Why would you use a Dremel tool? Well, you can use a Dremel tool if um, you've got a really big board or you've got some details that are really a lot harder to get by your hand. This makes a little bit more flexibility in your print. So what we can do is um, I'm going to get a scrap piece of Sheena board. Again, this is the Sheena board that um, we get from McLean's and it's a really great combination of wood for professional artists and it's um it's, it's really a great piece of wood and lots of different boards you can choose from. Okay, so let me get one of these. And do you need a um what do you need? I just need a black piece of paper. Okay, I'll show you. 